welcome to your weekend analysis video. I hope you're all well and you've all had a good week in the market. So some really exciting moves towards the end of the week there, which was really nice to see. So brought about some, some nice profits. I hope you all managed to take a ride on some of them. What we're going to do in this video is take a look at all of the different FX pairs and sort of take a broad picture as to what's going on and um, ultimately what setups could be presenting themselves for the week ahead. So let's start off by looking at the Aussie CAD. Now the Aussie CAD for me is a bit of a difficult one. If we look at this here, we just kind of like in a massive range here. And last week didn't really bring us anything that we particularly trade. Um, so if we see, obviously we were looking at the daily charts, at uh, the four hour charts, sorry, we're playing with these lows over here. The market's kind of broken out of those lows and is really respecting this um, previous level of resistance at the 0 0.9488 level a little bit more. So what I will say in terms of trading the Aussie CAD at the moment is it looks like it's going to be something that we can be trading to the upside. However, um, however, we don't want to be doing that until we break out above this level. So we'll just sit on our hands for the moment and see how that plays itself out. Moving on to the Aussie franc, there's not really a great deal taking place at the moment. You can see here on the four hour charts that the market is really sort of stuck in a range here. So from that perspective, we're just going to leave that until we get a little bit more price action and something that's a little bit more tradable, let's say. The Aussie yen, we got some nice momentum last week and the market is now a very, very interesting level. If I kind of get rid of that there and if I zoom in here, okay, on the four hour chart, you can see the, so from a longer term perspective, We've got this previous level of support in here, which is now acting as resistance. The way that I'm going to play this next week, or tomorrow rather, so going into tomorrow, is when the market breaks through the support level over here at the 7.8 spot 1.9. So when the market breaks through this area over here, I'm going to be shorting this with my stop above the, well actually I'm going to put it a little bit further above the highs here. I mean, looking at this from the 15 minute chart, you'd say, just above the highs is okay, but let's look at this from a little bit longer term, okay, and say that, okay, so from the four hour chart, there is quite some momentum here with the one hour chart too. So actually, I'm going to place it just above the previous highs over here on the one hour chart at around the seven, eight spot, eight, six level, just to give it that little bit of extra room to breathe in case the market does go against us somewhat. Targets, obviously, we'll look at the initial lows at the 7.7 spot 7.4, but then if we can get beneath that, we have to be looking at the 7.7 spot 4.5, okay? Moving on to the Aussie New Zealand. So the Aussie New Zealand, we had this trade in last week where we were looking for the break beneath the 1 spot 0.377, which has obviously bared fruits very, very nicely. Going into this week, we can see that there might be a short-term opportunity on the 15-minute chart. So if we were to get rid of this trend line over here and this over here, and as you guys can probably see, it's really quite simple. Just trading price action, it shouldn't be overly complex. You should be able to simplify it somewhat um, to, to the extent where you just have a simple set of rules for being able to get into and get out of the market. You don't need a million and one different indicators. You don't need some super magic system or anything like that. You know, simple is better. And, you know, if you can learn to read a chart like this and on the FX market, you can literally learn to trade anything there is around because they all kind of follow the same um, sort of principle. The Aussie New Zealand, I'm going to put this trend line in here, but I'm going to caveat that and say that if the market immediately breaks through this trend line when it opens a little later on this evening, I'm not going to just take this short. I want to see consolidation on this trend line overnight so that when we come to it tomorrow morning, where maybe when the market's up there, it's had a bit more respect for it. And then when it breaks it, I'll be interested in taking this to the short side, okay? So at the moment, I'm not going to do anything with it. I would like to see the price action climb up along this trend line overnight, and then we can see where we are from then. Um, the Aussie dollar's broken through the, the trend line, which we were talking about last week, which was very, very nice. Broken through, they're giving us some nice shorting opportunities. Now the market has pulled back to a previous level of resistance. So if we put in a horizontal line of resistance there, you can see that it's touched this 
area here at the 0 0.7052. But if we then go to the four hour chart, you can see that it's been a key level in the past as well. Back on the 11th of February, the market used this level to bounce from when it sold all the way down here. So that tells us that this is actually a very good level to be trading from. How are we going to trade from it? Well, the simplest way to do this, because the, the pullback, this is way too much of a pullback, too, too aggressive a pullback just to trade the trend line break. Um, and I spoke to some of you guys in the inner circle about this many, many times before about the aggression of the pullback and how that affects the type of price action that you're able to trade when it comes to the key levels. So what we're going to do here is we're going to look for that one, two, three reversal. So that means something like this. And so the market has already come up, given us a high. We want it to give us a, a structure low as well, pull back a little bit. Then once it's pulled back, sell off again and sell through the low, wherever that may be. And when we get the break of that low, that's where we enter our trade with our stop above the highs or a little bit further above the highs there, somewhere around the, um, let's call it the 0 spot 7060 area. And then trade that down, see how far it can go. If we move on to the CAD franc, this one is looking a little bit tricky. It's, um, we had the initial short last week. Um, and then looking into this week, we've got the market's just sort of gone sideways a little bit. So there's not an awful lot that we can trade right now. So CAD Frank is something that we're just going to wait to see how that develops next week. The CAD Yen, however, is looking really, really nice. So if we look at this on the four hour chart, initially we were looking um, for a break of this trend line here. Then when the market got to the highs, we were looking at a short term break to the highs, which we got, which was very nice. Now the market is sold off. It's also sold through the trend line. What we need to be looking for here is a way to trade the pullback. Now I'm going to ignore this price action here around the economic events because you get a lot of spikes around there. And unfortunately that kind of means that the trend line isn't sort of as accurate as it should be. So I would say that the price action more runs along the trend line here like that. Okay, ignoring these spikes. And what we'll be looking for here is some sort of a break of this trend line and also of a support level. So when we break that trend line, we're going to want to see the nearest support level be, be broken as well, which for me, we'd probably say that on the 15 minute chart, it would be this guy over here, somewhere at around the 82 spot 69 level. All right, that's on the CAD yen. With our stop will be above the highs there. Okay, so, and not just directly above the highs, but above the 200 moving average as well. So we want to give this trade enough room to breathe. I think you're looking at this price action here, you can see that the momentum is to the downside. You can see that the market, there are so many sellers involved in this market, they're probably not just going to accept a, an immediate turnaround here, you know, where the market's going to start moving off to the upside. So from that perspective, let's just, um, you know, let, let's give it enough room to breathe because I think that the, the next move ultimately will be to the downside. If we look at the Frank Yen, similar sort of setup, I would say, as the CAD Yen there. Okay, again, ignoring that spike low on the economic an announcement last week. And I would say ultimately we're looking for a breakdown of the trend line. Same principles apply. If we look at the CAD Yen, okay, and we look at where it's come from, we look at the Frank Yen, we can see that there's momentum in both of these pairs here. The moving averages on the medium term charts, being the one hour charts, are all pointing to the downside which is fantastic. The four hour charts are starting to point to that as well. So what we want to be looking for is a break of these trend lines. So Frank Yen, I'm looking for shorts. And again, I'm looking for a break of that trend line. The Euro Aussie is, let's say, it's, it's, what, it's the type of price action setup that I like to trade if we're trading in the direction of the trend. So it's this kind of price action setup where the market really trades along a ledge, so to speak. So it finds a support level and it just trades along that support levels and neanders along there. Um, what we then tend to get is when the market eventually does crack it, we get a little consolidation along here, followed by a very, very large move in the direction of the break. Now, the problem that we have here is that we can say that we're trading at a relatively significant level of support and the trend, <coughs> bless me, um, the trend is sort of to the upside here. Doesn't mean we're not going to trade it. It just means that we need to be a little bit more conservative with our entries. We're not going to go gung-ho into this one. We really need to kind of wait for, um, you know, the right setups. We're not going to take an immediate break. I will want to see 
a uh, bit of consolidation along this level overnight and then a break sometime tomorrow morning and then I'll be willing to take this. I may not take this with the same position size as I would one where I'm going with the trend, um, but it is something that I want to be involved in. The EuroCAD is, for me, I don't really see a pattern here. And if I don't see a pattern, if I don't see which way we can trade, then it doesn't really make much sense to be doing that. So we'll skip that for the moment. The Euro Pound, we have been shorting this for a long time now. I kind of think it's a little bit overcooked at the moment you know we've been looking for many many opportunities to take this short we then got the momentum going into it last week obviously with the brexit vote coming up and things like that that's going to make the pound pairs even more tricky to trade going into this week um so if it's not perfect we're not going to get involved and the euro pound is not perfect at the moment so we're just going to have to say let's do nothing with that for the moment the euro yen so going into last week we were looking to sell the the pullbacks in the euro yen the problem that we had here is that none of the pullbacks are really as um, pronounced as we would like going into this week however i think that we are having the sorts of pullbacks that we would like to see so i'm going to say that if we draw a trend line along the lows here okay like that on the 15 minute chart we can potentially take a short beneath this support level at the 124 spot 45. Stops would have to be above the 125 spot 06. But I would actually say looking at this momentum here, let's give it some more room to breathe and even put it above the 100 or the 200 moving average rather on the 15 minute chart. Or if you want to be really, really brave, even, you know, go a little bit further up. And look at the 200 moving average on the one hour chart to really give it a lot of a lot of room to breathe because i think that looking at this momentum here it's hard to imagine a market where this doesn't go shorter at least initially even if it is going to retrace all of this sell-off over here okay if we then look at the euro new zealand euro new zealand's shown us some nice momentum to the downside we were initially looking for a break to the upside last week we didn't get that. That's why we have the key levels in there, remember? So we don't just trade what we think is going to happen. We look at what's going on in the market. So then we react to the way that the markets obviously show us. Um, so from that perspective, we got saved from being in a losing trade there. The market then sold off um, and it's given us some opportunities to go short. At the moment, I don't like anything going directly into tomorrow, but I do think there's some sort of a pullback Next week, coming up in towards this um, trend line over here, and then a sell-off might make a lot of sense. Or even a short-term pullback on the one-hour chart followed by a pullback could also make sense. But at the moment, there's nothing much that I would trade here right now. So perhaps in tomorrow's Inner Circle Analysis video, we can talk about a setup if it presents itself. The Euro Pound has given us a very, very nice pullback over here on the 15-minute chart. And also on the one-hour chart, you can see that nice harmonic pullbacks and price action going away from it and now the market is looking to break back down if the market breaks the trend line and it breaks the one spot one two one four i will be 100 percent short there why because we're breaking a significant level of support there but look at this on the four hour chart as well look at the other level that it's playing with right now that's a big level of support over here so we've got a big level of support okay um there's been this so all of this year the market has played with that area it's now pulled back to it which really is no surprise whatsoever if the market wants to go short which i think looking at this momentum here we can safely say it does this is a great level for the sellers to get involved in now you could get involved at this level if you're a bit more aggressive but using the conservative approach to make sure that you know we make money in the long run and we're not sort of gunslingers so to speak we want to then get in on a break beneath the trend line and also of this recent supports level over here okay now we'll move on to the pound pairs so the pound pairs are going to be a little bit more difficult going into this week we've got a big week coming up this week and next week in terms of brexit and stuff like that um, so the pound is going to be very very jittery so what does that mean well it means that we're only going to take trades that look absolutely fantastic and we're going to keep a tight stop on all of our trades. So whereas we may say that we're happy to build into a position, we're happy to take a bit more of a loss and things like that. We're not happy to do that this week because if we keep too wide a stop, we could be on the wrong side of, you know, um, some sort of a political statement or some news about Brexit or something like that. And we can end up losing more money than we need to. So keeping tops tight, uh, tops, 
top stein. Stops tight, even if I learn to speak English, um, is going to be the order of the week as far as trading the pound pairs is concerned here. Now, what do we have? The pound Aussie is broken down 100%. We want to see some sort of a pullback going into tomorrow. So if the market can pull back along this trend line and then break down, that's going to represent a fantastic opportunity for us to short. We'll place our stop above the high, wherever that may be. And then we will be looking, um, ultimately keeping an eye on the markets to make sure that as soon as there's any, you know, sort of indication that the market is moving, turning around, we will get out of that trade. The pound um, CAD is sort of exactly the same thing, although there's no real setup that we can trade at the moment. So we can ignore that right now and talk about it in tomorrow's video. The pound franc is kind of the same thing. You would say that it's a bit better than the pound uh, the pound CAD, sorry, um, a little bit more similar to the pound Aussie. So we'll draw on a trend line there. And again, if we can get the price action along this trend line here and then the break that's going to represent a great opportunity to get involved in this trade but you know i'm not going to pay too much attention to the pound pairs at the moment because i think there are better opportunities next week um, with less economic and event risk surrounding it the pound yen also looks like a, a good trade so again we're looking for the pullback here as you can see Probably you might see it better looking at it from a one hour perspective than the 15 minute perspective because with all of these trades that I'm highlighting here, I'm not going to take them before tomorrow morning, but so before around seven, eight o'clock tomorrow morning. Um, so on the 15 minute chart, by the time it gets up to here, it's going to start to look potentially really untidy, which is why instead we'll look at taking it from the 60 minute chart. Pound New Zealand, sorry, I'm boring you here. I know I'm saying the same thing, but they're all a carbon copy of each other. And that should be a lesson in trading correlated pairs. They all trade when a big move is taking place, more or less the same as one another, which means that you don't want to be taking all of the trades at the same time because you just end up getting involved in correlated currency plays, which none of us want to do, right? We all want to be getting involved in those trades that, you know, really make sense and where we're not taking more risk that we need to be taking okay so from that perspective make sure that when you're going to be taking this trade here you don't get involved in all of them at the same time you take the one that makes the most sense at the time has the prettiest setup at the time um, as opposed to trying to get involved in every single one of them because you will come unstuck and you will end up losing money the pound dollar same thing okay all of these look let's go for it again pound aussie take a look at that Pound franc, okay, wasn't, uh, pound cad wasn't as pretty, but pound franc, pound yen, pound New Zealand, <coughs> pound dollar. They all look exactly the same as one another. And that's somewhere where rookie traders really go so, so, so wrong. They just don't understand this concept. And yes, when everything goes against you, fantastic, you make a lot of money. But when everything goes, uh, when everything goes for you, sorry, Fantastic, you make a lot of money, but when it goes against you, then you lose everything across the board and, you know, no one wants to be involved in that type of a trade, do they? Moving on to the New Zealand CAD, it's a little bit range bound at the moment, so I'm not going to trade anything here until I get some momentum. The same goes for the New Zealand franc and the New Zealand yen. Look at all of these from a longer term perspective. You can be seduced into looking at the shorter term charts and thinking, oh my goodness, there's a trade to be had here. But actually, if you look at things from the longer term, uh, from the longer term perspective, you can see that it's actually is a little bit more range bound and picking the direction isn't nearly as easy as if you were just kind of um, trading everything from the, the short term perspective, which would be misleading. The New Zealand dollar as well. We'll skip that for the moment. The dollar cat is giving us some momentum to the upside, which is good. Obviously, we looked into buying the breaks to the upside last week, which paid dividends, as you can see, if you got involved in any of them. Um, now going into this week here, we expect a bit more of a pullback, which we're already starting to see right here. We do want to ultimately be taking a trade to the upside, but what I would probably quite like to see in the pound dollar is some sort of a pullback like that, followed by a break to the upside. Okay, something like that would represent a good opportunity for me um, and really something that I do want to be involved with we don't have that trade yet so we have to wait for that price action but this is what we want to look out for on the dollar cad as you can see this is looking you know a hell of a lot prettier than the the dollar cad there so the dollar franc here as we can see 
we've got a nice orderly pullback which you can see uh, around the 15 minute chart here what we would like to see going into tomorrow which probably means that we won't end up getting involved in the trade till somewhere around here but if the market can hold beneath this level here and then break up sometime tomorrow morning breaking a resistance level as well that's going to represent a fantastic opportunity a great price action opportunity as well because if you take a look at the, the sort of area that the market is paying attention to all right right now it's this previous level of resistance over here so the market broke out above that level was pulled back to it if we can break this trend line and break that um resistance area as well it will represent a fantastic price action you know picture perfect previous resistance becomes support trade there for you and then finally we'll look at the dollar yen which does nothing absolutely nothing that we want it to do we wanted to get involved in the dollar yen here by the break to the upside but the market just absolutely sold off and didn't give us an opportunity to do that going into next week there's not a lot that I want to trade right now that's not to say that it won't change towards Tuesday or Wednesday of next week I'm just saying that right now I need to look at the price action to really decide how I want to be trading this okay so I hope you enjoyed the weekend analysis video if you've got any questions please feel free to drop in the email otherwise have a fantastic week in the markets and I'll speak to you on tomorrow's inner circle analysis video take care now